ranch dressing Crocs, Peeps flavored Pepsi, and Oscar Mayer's face masks. The world of brand collaborations is a wild place. And in this video, I'll be making my own brand collabs that no one really asked for, but that we all secretly wanted. First up, we have Wendy's collabing with Quaker Oats. See, Wendy's is one of those places where literally everything is deep fried, even the Frosties. He burnt my shake. Every spicy nugget that goes down your throat is another fat deposit that forms in your heart. On the other hand, Quaker Oats supposedly helps reduce the risk of heart disease, but as you can tell from their mascot, they don't get much attention from anyone not chugging prune juice on the daily. Every day should start with Quaker Oats. So I'm gonna make Wendy's themed Quaker Oats to attract a younger crowd and also offset the gallons of grease Wendy's goers consume every year. My idea is to replicate the Quaker Oats guy's really cool hand-painted style Style, but using the Wendy's girl instead. So I'll start off with someone who looks like a slightly older Wendy, which basically just means she has red hair. And to be honest, making realistic colored paintings is not something I have a ton of experience in, but I'm hoping if I can get this base model close enough to the final thing, then maybe it'll make the job a bit easier. The most iconic part of Wendy is of course her pigtails and the little blue bows that go along with them. Since the original Quaker man seems like he's standing out in the sunny fields, I'll give Wendy some warm sunlight bouncing off her hair and a nice flood of light across her face. Since Wendy's is a fast food joint, I'm gonna give her an apron. But since Quakers is all about farming, I'll adjust these straps to be straighter so they still resemble an apron, but they'll subliminally look like a farmer's overalls. Now this much neck is probably a little too risque for the Quakers. Oh God. So I'll give her a collared shirt instead that kind of resembles what waitresses would wear, you know, back in the 1950s and 60s when Wendy's first got started. Now I found this gal who seems like she got lost in the theater and somehow got stuck watching Spy Kids 3D. I just need her hands either way because I want Wendy to be holding a tin bucket of oats and picking one up to show us. Now, is it just me or does this thing not look like a foot from the blob people in Wally? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm just gonna get rid of that. Then I'm just gonna apply an edge filter to her. If you look under your bed at night and see this, it's too late for you, my friend. Basically, I'm just gonna use her as sketch guidelines for my painting. Well, let's just start out this journey with the hair, really just getting a solid base color down for it and then just coming in to paint some of these shadow areas followed by the lighter areas. And really, I think the trick here is to just build up these different layers of color to get more complex shapes that better resemble the actual subject. I can use really harsh strokes for creases and really subtle strokes to blend colors together in softer areas. Let's get those big blue bow ties on now and make sure they have a nice shiny finish on them. But now for our hardest battle yet, the face. But really, it's basically the same process. So while I spend the next several hours painting, I'm gonna share with you some of my favorite Wendy's roasts on Twitter. If you reply, I'll buy the whole Wendy's menu right now. Prove it. Well, here's your proof. <laughs> Thanks for sharing your baby pictures. Going to In-N-Out. What should I get, Wendy's? Out. Black Friday. <laughs> Need copy and link. When the tweets are as broken as the ice cream machine. Now that's 100% true. Wendy's. How do you compare to Carl's Jr.? They don't. Yeah, for one, if we were gonna diss another restaurant, we'd have more than zero likes and retweets after 13 hours. I wanna go on a date with Wendy's and take them to a real burger joint. Treat her like the princess she deserves to be. If you're looking for a princess, you might wanna let it go. Not interested in the frozen beef kingdom. Now just gotta get in the shirt which I'm gonna make super wrinkly, and that big blue apron as well. Then some blue stripes all along this, since that's what Wendy has in her logo. Then we'll get to the hands. The subject matter is so complex that even AI blows a gasket trying to draw them. Finally comes the bucket with all its little reflections and shiny bits. Then we'll spend the next 17 hours drawing like a thousand tiny oats in this bucket. This was a terrible idea. Wendy's main brand color is of course red, but to make sure that doesn't blend in too much with her hair, I'll add in a dark circle behind her, which mimics the circle in the original logo. And then a gold ring accent since Wendy's used to use a lot of yellow in their branding. And then for the logo, I found a font that I think blends the traditional look of Quaker with the looser style of Wendy's. And of course, people need to know that these are good for your heart. Since these oats are so small, I'm gonna paint a full-sized oat plant right under here to kind of go along with the whole grain oats text above it. Well, it looks like Wendy's now has another item to add to their breakfast menu and Quakers can start appealing to an audience who doesn't have AARP. Next up, I wanna make a collaboration with Apple, the company who was making folding phones before they were even a thing. Now there's two things I know about Apple. Their employee cafeteria is amazing and everything they use has to be Apple branded. So we need an Apple branded snack for the workers. It could be anything from chips to goldfish or heck even donuts, considering they work out of one. The app I'm using here to organize my ideas is called Milano, which happens to be sponsoring this video. I can put whatever images I want 
to in here, drag in some text boxes to type out my thoughts, or even pop in a video if I need to. Then I can organize everything however I want to map out my ideas. So we could combine goldfish with Apple's VR headset to make Fish Vision Pro snacks, or we could make a pie shaped like the Apple logo, or we could just make a donut packaged like an iPhone in one of Apple's plain white boxes. Being able to sketch right here in Millinote is actually really handy for being able to come up with quick concepts. Now I'm going to share this entire board with my brother and see which idea he likes best. Terrible idea. Generic. Eh. It'll work. Well, that's about as much approval as you're going to get out of him anyways. So we're going to want a plain white box with a donut. And clearly, Apple doesn't like standard hole punches. So I feel like they'd take a more dynamic island approach to things. Now, there really aren't that many well-known donut brands out there. So I'm just going to go with Dunkin'. And we'll just make a whole product line of donuts. From the standard iDonut to the iDonut Mini. And if you want icing, the iDonut Pro comes with your choice of three icing colors. Now, I just need to find the perfect donut for the package. I'll use the Milanote Web Clipper to copy images straight from Adobe Stock and pop them into my board. And out of these options, I think this one will work the best. So I'll plop it onto the box and see if Photoshop can remove this center bulb for me. What the heck? It just made a hole. Well, I guess I can actually use that. Let me just patch this up manually and then take this to form my dynamic island up here. Get a little shading on this bad boy. Then the text goes at the top. And let me check back here and see what font I was supposed to use. Perfect. And of course, this product is baked by Duncan in Massachusetts, which is their headquarters. Pop a little drop shadow on there and call it good. Now note's great for organizing all your projects at once with nested boards. And even better, it's free. So use my link down below to sign up for free and get started on your own project. So here we have the iDonut for $2.99, the iDonut Mini for $1.99, and the iDonut Pro for only $4.99. Sprinkles sold separately. Our next duo is 7up and Nintendo. Now 7up, which is very similar to Sprite, came onto the scene in 1929 with the name Bib Label Lithiated Lemon Lime Soda. And immediately following its release came the Great Depression. Now I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but bad names clearly have consequences. With only 2.3% of the market share, 7up needs a major marketing boost by the largest video game company in the world, Nintendo. But to be fair, when was the last time you saw Pikachu in the soup aisle or Link in the frozen foods? Nintendo needs to get their foot in the door of the huge cash cow that is the grocery aisle. So to accomplish these goals, I'll be making a Nintendo themed 7up can. Now Nintendo of course makes a lot of great games, but by far their most popular is the turtle murdering, mushroom sniffing, flag vandalizing plumber Mario, who has over 200 games in his franchise alone. So for this can, I definitely want a Mario character on here, but the question is which one? Well, Mario's universe doesn't have seven ups, but it does have one ups, which gives you an extra life in the game. So I can sketch out a big one up of mush man right here with his big bulbous head. And since this is seven up, we're gonna need six more of these little guys. My big idea here is to make it look like they're all floating around in the soda. Kind of like this drink will give you the same energy or life that these guys do in the games. For the line work, I'm keeping things nice and smooth with a stroke that has an even thickness all the way around. But I will give the shrooms in the back thinner lines and that'll just help them feel farther away from us. And I'll just give these the same color scheme as they have in the games. Now let's paint the background to look like 7up, which isn't really even green, but everybody just associates it with the green can. I actually read that 7up used to be brown back in the day, which let me just tell you, if you ever pick up a lemon lime soda and it's brown, don't put that stuff in your mouth. Now let's imagine we have sunlight coming down from above the surface of our our 7-Up Ocean. So we'll put some nice shadows on our fungus friends here, which will make them look less flat and more 3D. Oh, and we can't forget about that little sparkle in their eyes. Then a touch of shading to soften things up. Now, since this soda is chock full of thick, high fructose corn syrup, our mushies in the back are going to be a little more blurry and a tad less clear. They're also all going to cast shadows throughout the liquid below them in kind of what looks like dark streaks. Now for the logo, I found a font that looks cartoony and still a little squarish like the 1-Up font in Mario. But I want to make it 3D like the original 7up logo. Just give that a little shading and a small shadow from the big guy above. Some carbonated bubbles floating around our characters will help give this whole thing a bit of life. But the one thing that's missing is that little touch of red the original can had. That dot, in fact, used to be 7up's mascot called Spot, who did some questionable things to sodas on TV ads and even appeared in his own video games, Spot and Cool Spot, published by none other than Nintendo. Now, the obvious red thing to put on here would be Mario, but he doesn't seem to last too long underwater. So maybe I'll just borrow his hat and let our mushmelon wear it. I'll wrap it all up with some energy lines or a bit of zinc. Oh, and the flavor goes down here too. This bad boy will give you the sugar rush you need to conquer life and finally beat all eight worlds of the original NES Mario. Then we have Captain Morgan collabing with Lego. Now Lego, which was initially called Automatic Binding Bricks. <laughs> These names, man. Well, they're great for developing creativity, but they'll send you to the grave if you step on them. And with 4 billion Lego people worldwide, they're primed to take over the 
plant it anytime they choose. But these binding bricks are mainly targeted at kids, which is why they're going to be partnering with a product parents can appreciate, Captain Morgan, a famous line of rums. For our Lego-themed Captain Morgan drink, I chose a more plastic-looking bottle for obvious reasons. Now, on their boxes, Lego basically always shows their Lego pieces front and center over top a realistic background, which means we're gonna need us a Lego Captain Morgan. So I reached out to the brick boss himself, Jumi, who took a Jack Sparrow minifigure, replaced the torso to better match Morgan's clothes, gave him a cool pirate sword, and propped him up in the captain's iconic pose. I think the captain's barrel probably had rum in it, but I thought this gold treasure would be closer to something Lego would actually do. Our boy here is feeling a little blue, so we'll warm him up a bit. Then I'll adjust some of his clothes to be closer to the original logo. A little fun fact for you, but Captain Morgan was actually a real person. Apparently, he was quite a ruthless pirate selling the Caribbean, attacking Spanish ships and settlements. And we all know pirates only wear the finest of blue jeans with some country-sized boots. I'll say our captain discovered his treasure inside this cool oceanfront cave. Looks like I just need to give him an extra rock to stand on. Then we can blur the background to get that kind of miniature look. And I think a dim sun right behind his shoulder should help brighten up this dark and dreary cave and give a nice warm glow to all of these rocks. I'm gonna paint these edges pretty dark so the whole scene kind of fades into the bottom. Of course, we need this joint to have some spooky looking fog to scare away all but the toughest of pirates. Making the lighting on our Lego character here match the rest of the scene will really help ground him in it, especially adding in some subsurface scattering along his side. And that's just basically when light bounces around inside a surface before escaping. You'll see that effect a lot in the Lego movie if you've watched that. And of course, a pirate's treasure needs to be extra shiny and sparkling in the sunlight. I do feel like being in a cave by the ocean, we're gonna get some water seeping in here. And I'll flip our cap upside down to make some really subtle reflections in the water. I tell you, I really love these gold accents on the original bottle. So I'm gonna create a border around the label, add in some gold texture, and then a bit of shimmer and shine for realism. This is a bottle of spiced rum, and it's got a decent amount of uh, spirit in it. Of course, it's the one and only Captain Morgan's. And according to them, the folks over in these places have a certain fondness for it. And it wouldn't be a Lego product without mentioning what age it's for. Now, when you're at the last Toys R Us that hasn't shut down yet, you can buy your kid that $200 Lego Star Wars set and a drink to help you through the painful process of putting it all together yourself. If you want to see me redesign your favorite junk foods to trick you into thinking they're healthy, check out this video. And remember to sign up for a free account on Milanote to help support the channel.